Hello everyone and welcome back to the modding room. Finally, it's my time to use it. Today we will be building a special build, Auto G Team build, with the most sophisticated and advanced motherboard on the market up to date. So let's check out what liquid cooling parts do we have ready for this build. Let's get packing. We have a ton of fittings and offset fittings. I'm going to be going for the nickel fittings. These are the perks of working at EK that you can have many things here and decide along the way what will be the best choice. Also, I went for the white DRGB Wardar fans. I personally like these white fans. So this is my choice because the case is also a bit whitish. I guess it's time that we show the case then. Bring in the case. Hi, mom. Knife. This is the first time I'm building with this case. Love the accessory box. Making a lot of unwanted noise for the cameraman. Okay. Catch. Are you ready? You ready? You ready? You yeah, boy is the ROG Helios white edition with silver accents, which I really like. So you see that there's a 140 millimeter fan at the back and we have this universal reflection distro plate, which is also a 140 millimeter pattern. So that will go here in the back compared to other distro plates and setups, which mostly have the cooling at the front. We will have the pump and the reservoir and the distro at the back. So it's gonna be an interesting build. So let's start disassembling the case, removing all of the glass panels so that we don't break something. I don't break something. And then we'll get cracking again. We have prepped the case. I mean, I have prepped the case. He has just been watching. We removed all the fans because we will be using RGB fans and uh, the back fan, as I said, is going to be replaced by the distro plate. I think I'm going to go for the XE radiator. Uh, I did some research online and actually I got a good suggestion from James from the ROG Facebook group. I was looking to use the XE, uh, but there's not enough room here. Some said that I should just cut the case and make it bigger so that it can fit uh, fit more fans but I'm going to do a semi push pull so I'm gonna have three fans from the front and just two fans from the back so that the bottom uh, fan is missing so that everything can fit in the case I think that a single XC will be enough for the hardware that we will put here I'm gonna be going for the Strix 3080 and the motherboard is yet to be revealed Let's get started with the liquid cooling. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use this, but I'm gonna replace the D5. Be, be right back. So fresh of the production. So fresh up of, bleh, fresh of the production line. We have a DDC 4.2 with SATA cables or SATA cables. Let me know in the comments which one is correct. Is it SATA or SATA? The reason why I will replace the D5 is because D5 is too thick and it will overhang over the beautiful motherboard, which we want to see. And that's why I'm replacing it with a DDC, which is much, much, much smaller. When you buy a standalone pump, this is how it arrives. Fun times with Atelier. I have replaced the D5 with a DDC. We put a sexy heatsink on. I'm gonna apply the badge in the correct orientation. It's time to do a promo plugin. Shop now. This is going to be available soon TM. It's a preset torque screwdriver, which helps you not crack plexi anymore. It's preset to 0.6 newton meters, which means it works for 
most of the EK uh, products so, so that you can tighten screws. You will see the user manual for the screw so that you can know where you can uh, apply this and where not. It also works with the iFixit kit. So you can use the same bits, but you will get four or five bits included with the torque screwdriver. It gives a nice audible feedback when you hit the hit the torque setting. First, I'm gonna do a cross pattern screwing. Ah, there it was. One screw done. One more. One more. And there. By now. Okay, since I replaced a stock part on this distro plate, I'm gonna leak test it just to be safe so that I didn't mess anything up. So now that this mini distro plate is leak tested, we can put it in. But actually, I'm not quite sure because I think that first I need to put in the motherboard, which we will still delay and not show it yet so that you stay and watch this whole thing. I'm gonna start with the radiators now and put on some fans on the radiators. Pro tip about the fans. If you get new EK Vardar fans, it's very easy to remove the sticker from the hub, which I did for all eight fans, which we have here prepared. I did this because I'm gonna place three fans at the top as an, as an exhaust, which means that if I take off the sticker, that means that more light will go inside the case. And I think that this would look better. And it will also look better on the front of the case because it has a, a tinted window on the front. Without the sticker, it's gonna just be more visible. Let's install these fans onto the radiator, five on the XE and three at the top, which will be an exhaust. We have the fans on the radiator, bottom fan missing so that I can plug it in there. Some suggested that I sh should cut the case, but since I don't have white glossy paint here, I'm not gonna cut the case. I decided that I'm gonna leave one fan hanging out and I'm gonna put three fans at the top so that I have negative pressure inside the case so that more air comes in through, through the front and that would make the XC fat radiator work. So let's see if we can put it in there. I think that this GPU support is gonna be in the way. So let's try to remove it. We're gonna put that back later because it's a cool feature of this case. Let's try to get this bad boy in there. The, the brochure says that it supports fat radiators. It's happening. I need to check what's going on at the other side. Oh, we have a hard drive cage, which we have to remove. I guess it would be much easier if I started with this. Now this is why you need the iFixit kit. Telescopic screwdriver. <laughs> There. Hard drive cage goes out. Radiator rail goes in. Thumb screws. Should we bring the motherboard? Okay, let's let's bring the motherboard. It's gonna. Oh, you know what? No, let's let's first. Do the GPU, okay? GPU is back there. Fortunately, my colleagues were recording something about the active backplates and installations and stuff like that yesterday. So I have a water block GPU ready waiting for me with an active backplate, but I would like a simple backplate without the active backplate. So we're gonna remove that. Since I don't want the active backplate because I'm going to be attempting a full parallel loop, 
not really full parallel, but parallel from the GPU to the radiator. I don't want to use the active backplate, so I'm going to remove it. As I mentioned, my colleagues left it on from yesterday from recording, which is neat that I don't have to install the GPU lock, but I have to remove the backplate, active backplate. I would require a backplate. Thank you. That's a lot of pads. Now that I'm done with the back plate, it's time to return the stock terminal. And once again, I'm gonna use the EK Torx screwdriver. Buy now, link in the shop. Link in the video description below. Buy now. This is the mm, probably the most prominent way of breaking your GPU top is when users over tighten these screws. One of the main reasons why EK has went in went into sourcing one of these nifty torque screwdrivers. Put this here. Bring back the case and time to do the motherboard actually you know what i'm gonna do the top fans first i'm gonna do it like this let's do some minor cable management guess it's now time to you guessed it do the motherboard actually not Oh no, I'm just teasing. Oh no, are we there? Uh, uh. There it is. The ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme Glacial. It's the most advanced liquid-cooled motherboard on the market up to date. If you haven't seen our unboxing video or installation video, go check it out. It's on our YouTube ch channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see more awesome content. And uh, yeah, let's unbox this bad boy again. These are 14 millimeter HDCs, which I won't use. I'm gonna leave it back there. The motherboard. Set this aside so you can watch it. Very good thing about this motherboard is that it comes with pre-cut pads, which means that we will be quite fast with installing the pads on this monoblock and we will start off with number nine. Let's install the CPU. It's a 12th gen Elder Lake S CPU. Straight from Intel. It's in, apply the paste, cable time, like that, like that, and align the holes. If you're having any doubts about the screw pattern, there's a very, very, very nifty thing at the bottom of this box. There it is. Like this. So, dashed lines, longest screws. The full lines are the M4 screws. And the full small lines are the shorter small screws. But this installation foil is brilliant. I like it. Ultra block installed. Woo! There we go. My ingenious plan hasn't worked out the best way. So the reason why I went for this distro plate 
is because it really acts as a small disrupt plate and I wanted to connect the upper two ports straight to the motherboard and then I can use the other two outlets and inlets for the GPU and then the radiator. I wanted to use this because from the pictures it seemed that the top two ports would align perfectly with the ports on the on the motherboard so I can use just straight uh, pre-bent tubes just cut them to, to length and that's it. The issue is that the distro sits higher than the motherboard as, as you can see I can maybe even demonstrate it with this thingy I can screw it in so it's probably now visually more clear that the distro is higher than the ports on the motherboard. You can do two things. I can either use the offset fittings to bring it down from the distro, or I can just file at the slots so that I can bring the distro a bit down. I think I'm gonna go for the filing because it's from the back of the case and it's not visible. And I think that we can go down that much so that it's perfectly aligned because that's what I was looking for, perfect alignment. I have to make sure that I don't hit the IO brackets. That's that's where we are we are, are at now. And we'll try to solve this thing. As with every mod, build mod, uh, you you encounter some challenges that you have to conquer. Start date 99407.11 Captain's log. I've decided to not to file anything because I would have to move it way further down to uh, have the distro match the ports. So we will just drill holes much further down so that we can fit the distro aligned with the ports. But I did a doo doo. The thing is that the out port, which is on the left side, has to go here, which is the in. And then the right side port needs to go here, which means that the tubes are crossing. I could reverse the flow, but then the entire internet would crucify me for reversing the, the flow. So that's why I will just install the distro, have one tube go straight to the inlet, and then use offset fittings 14 millimeters to raise the two tubes and to go above it in the outport. Let's do it. Distro is in. The holes seem to align pretty well. I'm gonna put in the GPU if the ports on the distro align with the GPU or not. So, ladies baby, on its back. I should remove this, but I'm lazy. So I'm just gonna wing it. Okay, GPU is in. Let's secure the GPU with the, with the screw. I might at this moment use this. We only need one of these supports, so I'm gonna remove the other one. This is actually a nice cheap U support, I like it. Okay, is there a way for me to slide this in without having the need to remove something from the case? So, alignment time. I need to go from here to here, and from here to here, and that's why I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one right here. Come on, come on, like that. So I'm gonna wing this from, from the bottom out to here in the in, and we're gonna come back from here above this tube to here. Should we do some tubes right now? We have one set of tubes done and I think it looks great even though I had to use the offset fitting to go above the other tube so that we respect the flow of the inlet and the outlet on the monoblock. We have the GPU in there as well and if I see correctly this is gonna line up 
perfectly if I put some 14 millimeters offsets here. And then we will do the rest. Uh, I'm gonna flip the radiator. So while we are here, I'm gonna tell you what, what's my plan. Since this is removable, I'm gonna make my life easier with this build. Currently, I have the ports up and since th this is a nice cover, I can drill some holes on this. So I'm gonna flip the, the radiator. I'm gonna have the port on the radiator below the shroud, which means that I'm gonna drill some holes here. I'm gonna put some uh, pass-throughs there. So I'm gonna come down from the GPU into the pass-throughs and I'm gonna link the pass-throughs with the radiator with uh, soft tubes so that my life is much easier. And I think it's gonna look nice that we have three sets of parallel tubes. So that's the plan. Let's uh, do it. So making the holes on the shroud with this tool didn't go as quite happily as I planned. This is more for wood and uh, aluminium. This turns out to be quite nice steel. I totally didn't scratch the, the surface of this. So I applied some matte black vinyl, which will actually match the entire build. And guess I'm ready to uh, install it. Actually, I'm just gonna test fit it. Maybe we can see how does it look. Can get it out, flip the, the radiator, and I guess we will be continuing with the soft tubes. Maybe I can just do the soft tubes in the bottom right now and flip the radiator. Cool, let's do that. Tubes are done. I kind of don't like what I did here. I, I messed up a bit because this tube should be on the left side inwards and this on the front. If I've done that, I would get the same crossing effect that I have here. But now here I just have tubes going down parallel, uh, which is nice. But me personally would like it better if I had the same crossing effect on the bottom tubes as on these ones and the top ones but nevertheless by the time you are watching this video the uh, ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme Glacial will be already launched so this is a build that we have done before the launch so that we have it ready for the launch we even gotten some DDR5 from our friends at G-Skill this is brand new hot we have only gotten two sticks but nevertheless it's enough to run this beast. And now for some final touches, I'm gonna put in the power supply, do the cables and uh, fill the loop. Wow, uh, this is done. I think uh, now it's time to fill it. We have checked for leaks. No leaks, I'm excited to fill this and see how does this parallel uh, GPU radiator loop going to work. It's not advised to, to do this. Uh, this won't bring you the best performance, but I did it for the aesthetics because I really like how the coolant will go parallel from the GPU to the radiator. And also this tropet helps us distribute the coolant right to the motherboard and then to the rest of the loop. So it's quite a interesting setup that hasn't been done before actually. This thing sparked an idea that maybe we could do something similar, but in a smaller form factor, which would be a standard FLT combo so that you can mount it on the backside 
because now you have the standard FLT which has the pump on the back which means the whole thing has to come forward and block the board but since this one has the pump from the other side you can mount it to, to the back so if you're interested in something like that write in the comments and we'll try to make it uh, without further ado let's fill it and film it in slow motion So there we have it, we had a successful fill for the loop, we had no leaks uh, because we tested it with the leak tester, we also have a successful boot for the ROG Maximus Z690 Extreme Glacial, which is the most advanced motherboard on the market up to date. We're going to be discussing the build and the, and the motherboard in a live stream, so be sure to follow us on social media, we, we will have a special announcement for this. We will be able to discuss what have we done with the loop, what you think I could have done different, and uh, talk about the motherboard and its features. So that's it. Thank you for watching this series about this build and I hope you like it and see you in the live stream. Bye bye.